A welder's cross-country road trip takes an unexpected turn when he stops to pick up a pregnant woman stranded at the gas station. But what she says next leaves his eyes wide with shock, forever changing his life and leading him down a dangerous path. Hi everyone, welcome to Tales Unveiled. Today, I'm excited to share a new story with you. Let's get started. The tires on Alex's old van hummed against the hot tarmac as he drove home through the summer evening. He'd been on a grueling ten-week job away from home, working as a welder on a huge new skyscraper going up in the city. His work was done, and he was eager to get back to his cozy apartment and his girlfriend, Madison. As he neared the home, he glanced at the shiny new necklace he'd purchased for Madison, imagining her face light up as she saw it for the first time. As he pulled on to the street, the familiar summer buzz he'd expected was absent. The streets were unusually quiet, missing the usual sounds of children playing and neighbors chatting on porches. His heart pounded as he pulled up to his building, the third-floor window dark and unwelcoming. The key turned in the lock with a hollow click. A thick layer of dust coated the living room. Panic rose in his throat as he reached for his phone, only to find it lifeless. He fumbled for the landline, his eyes falling on a folded note. Alex's hands shook as he opened the note. Madison's words hit him hard. I'm so sorry. I've met someone else. He felt sick. Madison had fallen for Corey, their co-worker. It was over. The apartment felt empty and cold without her. He had to see the truth for himself. Grabbing his keys, he raced back to his car and sped towards Madison's office. It was late, but the lights were still on. Through the frosted window, he saw Madison laughing with Corey, a painful confirmation of her betrayal. For the next few days, Alex canceled his upcoming work and hid in his apartment, drowning his sorrows in whiskey. The necklace reminded him of the future he'd lost with Madison, and it haunted him. He couldn't sleep or eat. One evening, there was a gentle knock on the door. Mrs. Chen, his elderly neighbor from across the hall, stood with a concerned look on her face. A plate of steaming dumplings in hand, she looked into the gloomy apartment. Alex, dear, I haven't seen you around lately. Are you all right? Alex opened the door wider, the smell of stale air and alcohol hitting Mrs. Chen. Her eyes widened as she saw his messy hair and the empty bottles scattered around. Come in, Mrs. Chen, Alex muttered, ashamed of the state of his apartment and himself. Mrs. Chen gently led Alex to the couch and set the dumplings down. She listened as he poured out his pain over Madison's betrayal and his struggles since. Her eyes filled with understanding. Heartbreak is a storm, Alex she said softly, but even the worst ones end eventually. Mrs. Chen's words, though simple, struck a chord within Alex. She shared stories of overcoming hardship, of finding unexpected sources of strength, of refusing to let pain define her. As they talked, Alex felt a bit of hope for the first time since Madison went. Inspired by Mrs. Chen's resilience, Alex decided it was time to move. He threw some clothes in a bag, grabbed his dusty camera, and slid into his van. A change of scenery, he thought, might be just what he needed, and he could always find bits of work on the way. With a grateful wave to Mrs. Chen, he hit the open road. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Alex found himself driving on a deserted stretch of highway. The only signs of life were the distant lights of farmhouses. He pulled over onto a quiet dirt road for a break. His headlights illuminated a clearing surrounded by trees, and as he stepped out, a sudden burst of light and color took him by surprise. Suddenly, fireworks exploded behind the trees, painting the dark sky with bright colors. The unexpected show startled Alex, snapping him back to reality. A wave of sadness washed over him as he remembered the New Year's Eve he and Madison had spent together, watching fireworks and dreaming of a future that now seemed impossible. He laughed bitterly. 
The difference between that memory and his current situation was a harsh reminder of how quickly things could change. But there was also something comforting about the fireworks. It gave him a feeling that maybe things could be okay in the end. Alex got back in his car and continued driving. He still didn't know where he was going. As dawn broke, Alex pulled into a gas station, low on fuel. The attendant looked busy with the morning rush. Fill it up, please, Alex said, handing over his card. Inside, he saw a young woman, her face contorted in pain, clutching her abdomen. She made eye contact with Alex and mouthed, Help! What's wrong? Alex gasped. I'm in labor and I can't drive any further. I can't wait for an ambulance. The baby is coming now. Please, sir, can you take me to the hospital? Alex's heart raced. He'd never dealt with childbirth, but the woman's desperate look left no time to think. Yes, of course, he said, grabbing his keys. Let me pay for gas first. He quickly settled the bill and rushed to help the woman into his car. As they sped towards the hospital, her cries of pain intensified. Alex tried to calm her, offering kind words as he drove through the busy streets. When he glanced at her, he was shocked to see her staring intensely. James, it's you, she whispered. Confused and worried, Alex kept his eyes on the road. My name is Alex, he gently corrected her. We'll be there soon. But the woman continued staring, her eyes filled with wonder and disbelief. Upon arriving at the hospital, Alex carried the woman into the emergency room, where a team of nurses whisked her away. He gave his contact information to a nurse, promising to check on them later. As he drove away, the image of the woman's face, her eyes filled with a strange recognition, haunted him. A few hours later, Alex's phone buzzed with an unknown number. Hesitantly, he answered. Hello? James, is that you? A weak voice questioned from the other end. Alex's heart pounded in his chest. My name is Alex. I drove you to the hospital this morning. A pause. James, please don't play games with me. I know it's you. The confusion turned to a cold dread in Alex's gut. Ma'am, I really think you have the wrong person. I'm not James, whoever that is. But, but you look exactly like him, she insisted. And you were so kind, just like he would be. Ma'am, I... It's Abigail, she interrupted. Your wife. Alex was speechless. This woman, Abigail, clearly believed he was someone named James, her husband. But how was that possible? He had never seen her before in his life. Abigail, I'm not your husband. I think you're mistaken, he said, his voice trembling slightly. But the baby, she choked out, a sob escaping her lips. You're the father of our son. Alex felt sick. This wasn't just a simple mix-up. This woman truly believed he was her husband and the father of her new baby. But why him? Who was this James she kept mentioning? Abigail, I need to go, he said, his voice barely a whisper. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. He hung up, his hands shaking. This was too strange to ignore. He had to find out who James was and why this woman thought he was him. But first, he needed answers. He had to talk to her again, understand why she was so sure. Taking a deep breath, he dialed the hospital. After what felt like an eternity, the nurse picked up the phone. Maternity ward, she said. Alex took another deep breath. Hello, I'm the man who brought in a patient earlier this morning, Abigail. Uh... He stumbled over the last name he couldn't recall. Abigail Woods? The nurse offered. Yes, that's her. I need to speak with her. A pause. Mr. Woods? No, Alex corrected. My name is Alex. I just need to ask her a few questions. Another pause, longer this time. I'll see if she's up for visitors. Minutes later, Alex found himself sitting beside Abigail's hospital bed, 
her newborn son sleeping peacefully in the bassinet next to her. Her eyes were filled with the same strange recognition as before. James, she whispered, reaching out to touch his hand. Abigail, he began, choosing his words carefully. I know you think I'm your husband, but I'm not. My name is Alex. A shadow of disappointment crossed her face. But you look so much like him, she murmured. I know, Alex replied softly. But I'm not him. I don't know who James is. Abigail's eyes welled up with tears. James was my husband, she said, her voice barely audible. He was a real estate developer. He was brilliant, kind, loving. He was my everything. Alex listened intently, his heart aching for her. He was working on a new project, something big, she continued. But his business partner, Mark, he was jealous. He wanted all the credit, all the money. They had a falling out, a terrible argument. Her voice trailed off, choked with emotion. Alex gently squeezed her hand, urging her to continue. There was an accident, she whispered, her eyes filled with pain. A car accident. It was suspicious. The police said it was an accident, but I know it wasn't. Mark did it. He killed James. Alex's blood ran cold. This was far more than a case of mistaken identity. This was a tragedy. James is gone, she sobbed her body shaking with grief. And now you're here. It's like a miracle, like he's come back to me. Alex didn't know what to say. He reached for her hand to try and comfort her. The room filled with a heavy silence, both Alex and Abigail lost in their own thoughts and disbelief. Abigail's hands shake slightly as she reaches for a small box on the bedside table and opens it. Inside, among other small items, is an old photograph. Carefully, she takes it out and hands it to Alex, tears welling up in her eyes. Alex looked at the photograph in disbelief. Two boys, identical twins, smiled out from the picture. One was him, but who was the other? That's me, Alex said, his voice thick with confusion. Who's the other boy? Abigail choked back a sob. That's James, she whispered. Your twin brother. Alex stared at her in disbelief. Twin brother? But I don't have a twin. He knew he had been adopted as a baby, a fact repeated to him throughout his childhood. But a twin brother was news to him. He's gone now, Abigail said. But James knew you were out there somewhere. He never gave up hope of finding you one day. The room seemed to close in on Alex as he processed this shocking news. A twin brother he never knew existed. Why didn't I know about him? He asked, his voice filled with confusion and hurt. Why did you... He trailed off, unable to finish the question. Abigail looked down at the photo, her fingers tracing the outline of James's face. When James died, she began her voice shaking. The grief was unbearable. When I first saw you for a moment, I thought... I thought he had come back. Understanding dawned on Alex. The resemblance between him and James had caused Abigail to mistake him for her deceased husband. It was a cruel twist of fate, a painful reminder of her loss. But now, Abigail continued, her voice stronger now, I see clearly. You're not James. You're Alex. And I'm so sorry for the confusion. Just then, the door to the room burst open with a loud bang. Mark, James's business partner, stormed in, his face twisted in rage. You! he snarled, pointing a trembling finger at Alex. You're alive! Alex recoiled, his heart pounding in his chest. Who are you? he demanded his voice barely a whisper. Mark Davis, the man spat. And you're James Woods. I thought I saw you die in that car crash. You can't fool me. Mark lunged at Alex, but he was quickly restrained by hospital security. Abigail watched the scene unfold, her eyes wide with terror. It's not James, she cried. He's his twin brother, Alex. 
Mark froze. Twin brother? He muttered with disbelief. Alex quickly pulled out his phone, activating the voice recorder without Mark knowing. Mark glanced at Alex, then at Abigail, then back at Alex. I didn't mean to kill him, he mumbled, his voice barely audible. It was an accident. An accident? Alex scoffed. You tampered with his car brakes. That's not an accident. That's murder. I know, Mark confessed, his voice filled with remorse. I was jealous of him. He had everything I wanted. I never meant for him to die. Alex stopped the recording and called the police. Within minutes, they arrived and took Mark into custody. Abigail watched as he was led away as she struggled to process what had just happened. Alex turned to her. It's over, Abigail, he said softly. You and your son are safe now. Tears streamed down her face as she reached out to him. Thank you, she whispered. Thank you for everything. Alex hugged Abigail, feeling both sad for her loss and thankful for the connection they'd made. He had accidentally walked into this tragedy while looking for a new beginning, and now he had found a link to the twin brother he never knew. He promised himself to help Abigail recover, to make sure James got justice, and to learn more about his own family history. Mark's confession led to a quick arrest and murder charges. The evidence, along with his admission, made it an easy case for the police. Justice for James was finally coming. After all that happened, Alex found himself becoming a part of Abigail's life. With James gone and Mark in jail, their real estate development business was in trouble. Abigail, grieving and caring for her new baby, couldn't manage it alone. Alex, with his business skills and connections, stepped in. He offered to help Abigail run the company to keep James's dream alive. It was a way to honor his brother's memory and ensure that his legacy didn't die with him. Working together, Alex and Abigail found comfort and support in each other. They shared their sorrows, hopes, and dreams. Alex became a regular part of Abigail and her son's life, like a caring uncle, always there to lend a helping hand. Their family was different from most, but it showed how strong people can be. They came together through tragedy and built something positive and loving. Alex, once lost, found purpose and a place to call home. Abigail, heartbroken from losing James, found new strength and a reason to keep going. There was no romance, no hidden agendas, just a genuine desire to care for each other and create a loving home for Abigail's son. A year had flown by since Alex, Abigail, and her son became an unconventional family. The pain of losing James was still there, but it had eased, replaced by a quiet acceptance and a newfound appreciation for life's precious moments. With the holidays coming up, they decided to celebrate with Mrs. Chen, the kind neighbor who had cared for Alex. Mrs. Chen's home was warm and inviting. It smelled like fresh-baked treats, and the sounds of children playing outside drifted in. Alex, Abigail, and her son relaxed together on the porch, enjoying the summer breeze. They shared stories, laughter, and memories. They raised a toast to James, thanked Mrs. Chen for her kindness, and celebrated the surprising events that brought them all together. Alex thought about the amazing journey he'd been on, a journey that started with him looking for a fresh start and ended with him finding a brother, a new family, and a real purpose in life. To new beginnings, he raised his glass, his eyes meeting Abigail's across the room. To new beginnings, she echoed, a soft smile gracing her lips. Their glasses met with a cheerful clink, a shared smile acknowledging the unspoken bond between them. This summer had been a season of unexpected miracles, a time of healing and new beginnings. As time passed, Alex and Abigail's lives drifted in different directions. Alex, with a desire to see the world, moved on, leaving Abigail and her son to rebuild their lives. But before he left, Alex placed a small box in her hands. This is for you, he said softly. It's a symbol of hope, 
a reminder that even after the darkest storms, there's always light waiting to break through. Abigail opened the box to reveal the necklace, its beauty catching the morning sunlight. Tears welled up in her eyes. Even though they were no longer together, the bond they formed that summer stayed strong. Alex would always be the uncle to Abigail's son. They stayed in touch, forever a part of each other's stories. Loved this story? Tap that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Let us know how this story made you feel with a single word in the comments. While you're at it, check out the video currently on your screen. See you next time.